Salam and welcome to Somali Dispatch, SomaliDispatch.com. My name is Abdi Kadir Gulen. Ambassador Mohammed Ali Noor Americo recently wrote a book called Denjire. It chronicles the daily and political life of Ambassador Mohammed, who served as Somalia's ambassador to Kenya for eight years. He's also a philanthropist who helps those in need, advocates for peace and stability for the country. We contacted him in Mogadishu to discuss his new book and his other commendable work that he is currently immersed in. Ambassador Mohamed al Nur Amirko, welcome to SomaliDispatch.com. Uh, uh, I'd like to start by welcoming you first uh, to this platform and, and thank you for accepting our invitation. I thank you, Gulid. Uh, I'm really appreciative uh, for having me. Thank you. Ambassador, you recently wrote a book called Denjire. Uh, if you could start us off by uh, telling us what compelled you to write that book would be great. Uh, thank you. Uh, the book's called Denjire, uh, which is Somali. Uh, Denjire meaning uh, ambassador. Um, after I uh, finished my duties as a Somali ambassador to Kenya in 2015, uh, and I did uh, something I call the uh, peace uh, journey. Uh, I traveled throughout Somalia. Um, I went also uh, to the Somali diaspora. After I came back, uh, that's when I decided that I should write the book. And also uh, many of my colleagues and families uh, recommended that I should uh, leave uh, something behind for the youth and, and the people to read and, and, and talk about what I did uh, throughout my, my career. Um, that's what really prompted me to do it. Excellent. Um, the book chronicles uh, your life's work, uh, essentially. And, and perhaps uh, if you can go back a bit and, and tell us about the, some of the commendable work that you did during the civil war um, prior to your tenure in Nairobi as an ambassador uh, for Somalia. And uh, first of all, if I go back to the book, it talks about uh, my life, talks about uh, the, uh, for my parents' life and, and my, my childhood education. Um, I went uh, to the United States in 1980 after I finished uh, high school. Uh, I studied um, in, in Maryland, and after I finished my university degrees, I went back to Somalia. Uh, I started working at Central Bank of Somalia. Uh, I talk more details in the book. Uh, my dad, my father, uh, who passed away now, and uh, he really uh, was uh, um, the mastermind, I can say, uh, that really he told me before I left uh, to study in the States that after I finished my education, uh, I should come back to Somalia because I studied uh, uh, in Somalia at that time, uh, the education was free and everything was paid by the people uh, taxes. And he said that you should come back and repay of what you have, uh, the way you have learned. That's why I came back and, and started working at the Central Bank of Somalia until the civil war. Um, and then when the civil war started, and me and my family, uh, we went back to the States and Canada uh, after the death of my daughter, who was 18 years old. Okay. 18 months old now. So. Okay. Um, so, you know, fast forward, um, uh, you know, other than for your name, uh, you're also known uh, for all the work that you've done since, um, including the ambassadorship to Kenya and Nairobi at a time when Somalia was actually recovering uh, politically uh, from all the chaos that happened. Could you tell us a bit about serving your country in Nairobi at such a time? Yeah, that's very true. Actually, when uh, the, uh, the transitional federal government of Somalia was established in Nairobi uh, in 2004, um, I uh, went back to Nairobi uh, to be uh, the uh, director general of the prime minister, former prime minister's office, Ali Gedi. And after the government went back to Somalia, I stayed behind to reopen the Somali embassy, which was closed back in 1991-92, uh, because uh, Nairobi at that time, or Kenya, was really the hub, I can say, or the uh, where the digital community, uh, the UN, uh, were based temporarily. Um, and uh, we needed an embassy there. Also, uh, Kenya, there were about half a million Somali refugees in the biggest refugee camp in the world, Adab and Kakuma. Also, we had uh, business people who had uh, businesses in Nairobi and Mombasa and other places. They all need consular services. Uh, we were lucky enough 
to uh, have be the first Somali embassy since the civil war to uh, to give or, or, or to establish uh, the uh, Somali uh, passport, uh, the e passport, which was the electronic passport, with the Somali, the first embassy to do that. Also, since as I said earlier, uh, there were uh, and still are a lot of refugees. They need help and assistance, and we were happy and we were really uh, lucky enough to serve them, to assist them, uh, to give them guidance also to the Somali uh, community business people who uh, never, most of them haven't seen uh, consular services, embassies, and uh, we have to uh, tell them that uh, they should have passports, they should have, uh, you know, uh, the documents in order so that we can serve them. Tell them also that, uh, that we as embassy are here to serve them. If anything happens to them, they can call us 24 hours, and uh, many times I remember in the middle of the night, uh, we used to go to the uh, police stations and assist our uh, countrymen and women. Um, also, I can tell you, uh, it was a big story, uh, uh, the attack of Westgate Mall uh, in Nairobi. Uh, there was a, a big attack there by terrorist groups. Um, what happened was that uh, as the media, unluckily, you know, or sadly, always, uh, say that any attack that took place, uh, this say that they are Somalis. And when that happened, uh, the first thing I heard was that in the TV or, or radio, that all the media were saying that, you know, these attacks, uh, the people who attacked them were Somalis. And as an ambassador, you know, it was my duty to, to defend my people. Uh, of course, I condemned uh, the attack. Uh, and I told them that uh, some of the people who were killed and some of the people who were injured in Westgate Mall were Somalis. Uh, and what I did also that I started and went to the um, blood drive and I give my own blood to, uh, to, to, to the, to the, uh, the Kenyan Red Cross, tell them that uh, I'm here to uh, give my blood to the people who were injured. What happened was that also after I did that and uh, the pictures and the video were shown on the media, many Somalis in the uh, Nairobi Sli area also went to the same place and other places uh, and give their own blood, saying that we are following what our ambassador did. And also in the refugee camps, they did the same thing. That really turned the, uh, the image of Somali people that was uh, in, the, uh, in the media. And everybody uh, really uh, said that they welcomed and, and changed their attitude to Somali people. Right. And, and, and that was well documented in, in, in media. And I think that was a, a savvy political move on your part at the time. And, and really the results speak for themselves. Uh, let me fast forward to uh, 2010 and you creating a nonprofit organization named after your 18 month old at the time daughter named Yasmin. Uh, if you can tell us a bit about the work that you do on her, on her behalf and, 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 and the organization. And, and how it came about would be great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, the, uh, after uh, my daughter was killed uh, in 1992, uh, she was 18 months and um, I took all my family uh, to Nairobi, then to, to States, then to Canada. And I came back um, in, uh, in 2010, as you said correctly, uh, I established that foundation. Uh, we have, uh, we dug wells. Uh, we also, uh, first time, opened and built a school uh, called Yasmin Elementary uh, and High School, secondary school, in a place called El Edfid. It's uh, a little bit outside, north of Mogadishu. Um, there are about uh, 180, 200 uh, students attend the school, uh, mostly uh, girls and uh, they uh, attend the school uh, without paying fees. Now in Somalia, uh, they are not, uh, I think maybe a few, or, but mostly schools, are, uh, they have to pay fees. Uh, and that school, uh, me and my, my family are paying for the uh, salaries of the teachers. We built the school too. And also we have um, uh, built other schools. We assist and help uh, the schools for the, uh, um, and unprivileged kids, uh, kids who cannot pay for the fees, uh, you know, orphans. Uh, and also, uh, we also help, start helping uh, the kids uh, who are, who are um, disabled or, 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 you know, who, who need help also. 
Right. Um, uh, and again, uh, let me take the time to commend you for that work. And, and, and similarly, those who are doing uh, a lot of work similar to yours uh, really don't get the, the you know, uh, the recommended and the, and the um, you know gratitude shown to them that and, and encourage them to continue to do the work. Um, you know this work um, with it with all of its values uh, are are much different uh, than those that you were known for in the past as a politician. Uh, can you please highlight some of the differences between the two roles? Uh, and, and, and perhaps, at least in my opinion, I think the latter work that you're doing now is, is in, on my, uh, in my opinion, is, is, is as, just as valuable. And I think perhaps a lot more of us, if we could focus on that rather than just the politics, I think the nation would be much further ahead than where it is today. Uh, if you can highlight some differences and, and, and perhaps make recommendations in, in, in which path to take in terms of serving the country and its citizens? You know, it is really, I was, I was really happy and, and, and I'm glad that I served my people, I served my country, my government. Uh, during the eight years, I was the Somali ambassador to Kenya. But uh, after that, uh, now, uh, as you have said, uh, I'm more, um, uh, I spend more time on helping the people, humanitarian. What really prompted me uh, to do that, I think was the, the journey I did. Uh, 2015, uh, 2016, the trip I took throughout Somalia. I traveled, uh, I drove uh, on car, I drove uh, most of the cities in Somalia, sat down with the elders, uh, have teas in small shops, small towns, listen to them, uh, what they need, uh, and, and, and all that really pushed me more to dedicate myself to helping the people. And also, I have to say also, uh, I think um, I'm, I'm taking, I took this from my mom. My mother, uh, my mom passed away. Uh, and also she was more, she was more humanitarian than anybody I've ever seen. I can give you exam examples. Please go ahead. My mom, yeah, my mom passed away uh, when I was nine years old. Uh, the, the few years I can remember what she used to do in our house where we used to live uh, is that uh, every day when we, when we eat, dinner or lunch or breakfast, she used to tell us before you eat, she used to give us food, tell us go help and take it to the needy people. The people who live in our area, our neighbors who really are our needy people, we used to take them the food, then we eat ourselves. Another thing that I've learned from her was uh, that, you know, when we had, uh, have, uh, we called Alabari, you know, uh, when we have, uh, throughout the years, you know, like Eid or, or, or other uh, celebrations. Uh, in mostly in Somalia, uh, when we eat the food or invite the people, uh, usually, you know, uh, people come there, needy people come there, uh, need people who need assistance come there. We call them Masakins, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they usually wait until the other people eat the food. Usually they get the, uh, the, the, the handovers or the leftovers, I can say. But my mom was so adamant that in our house, one room was dedicated for them. She used to tell us they have to eat the same time, the same time that everybody else eats. I will never forget that. That really, uh, I'm now whenever I do something, that's what pushes me. Uh, remember with my mom, told us and, and, and really uh, advised us to do it. That's why I'm happy uh, helping the people. Uh, and that's why I also tell the people that whatever you can, if you need, if you help the people, and I believe that God will help you too. Uh, another resounding example of the roles that Somali mothers play in shaping uh, the offspring's lives and, and really contributing to the nation at actually at its most needed times and, and to have that lasting image and influence from your mom is really uh, heartwarming. Um, these days, uh, there aren't many statesmen like yourself who uh, take it upon themselves to engage and interact with the youth, for example, um, in social media, in, in every possible way. Uh, your, your life is, is, is displayed uh, its positiveness is displayed on, on social media uh, for all Somalis to see. And, and, and that's what actually gravitated me towards 
having this interview with you. Can you tell us a bit about um, the need that perhaps other politicians and elders should have to interact with the youth of today? And, uh, you know, what is that experience like for you? Let me start with that. Really, it's, it's really, I, whenever, whenever I travel, whenever I go to uh, Somalia in the diaspora also, uh, it's especially now in Somalia, we say that over 70% of the population are youth. And uh, they always uh, uh, talk about in the media, on social media, that you know, there's a high unemployment, education, uh, they can't get uh, universities and, and such things. But um, what I do is that whenever I come to Somalia, I try to interact with them, listen to them, and I can see that some of them, there's something, I think there's trauma. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't have venue where they can let it out. They don't have venue they can talk to. Uh, I'm not now, uh, I'm not a doctor, but when I sit with them, I try myself not to talk much, but listen to them. And really, they have a lot of uh, good things inside their heart. They have good things to say. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, the other day, I was, uh, I was sitting, usually I go at the beach uh, in the morning or the afternoon just to, to, to enjoy uh, the beach. And one day came to me, he was a young man. Uh, he said he, he finished uh, university uh, last year. He's unemployed. And, and I said, Ambassador, you know, uh, I know you're a good person. Can I talk to you? I said, okay, come sit down. He sat there and he started telling me about his life. You know, uh, about his parents, you know, how, what he went through, his, his school and, 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 and all his problems, you know. Uh, we were talking like about half an hour. After he finished, and I tried to give him advice or, or, or tell him good things. He said, Ambassador, that's all I need. Thank you. And he gave me a hug. He said, I just needed to vent out, you know. Uh, and tell his story. Yeah. So, so and, and it's, not, it's, not, it's not only the first time. Every time on my, on my, on my social media, I try to read my message. You know? I try to, to, to read as much as I could. Every time, every day, almost I receive like 10 to 15 or 20 messages from people I don't know. They just want to, to be heard of. Some of them, they go details about their, their private lives, uh, about their problems. And some say that uh, we just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why now I can take advantage of your interview, could it, that we should open our hearts and our ears to our youth. They are our future leaders. They are today's leaders too. We should listen to them. Some of them, they have problems. Maybe we cannot solve them, but most of them, as I've experienced it, they just want to be heard of. We should listen to them. Right. And, and, and another thing I can, add, I can add, please, is also, I like to show and, 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 and support uh, the youth who are doing good jobs. I visit them uh, in the places where they, they, they have businesses. I, I talk to them. I try to, you know, uh, tell them that, you know, I will put them on social media. Uh, an example was uh, last week uh, when I visited uh, young girls uh, who had, uh, you know, a juice uh, place. Yeah, stand, yeah. In, in, in the street, you know, uh, right. uh, they used to sell juice. And then now, luckily, they put the money together and, and they opened it, a coffee shop. I saw that. That was amazing. Uh, yeah. The girl, Hafsa, she sent me a message uh, on, my, on, my, on my WhatsApp. I don't know how she got my, my number. And I read it, and I was having lunch with friends of mine. And she said, uh, that about, you know, I heard you're a good person, you're a motivator. Uh, can you please come to us? We are located at that, that place. And, and I said, uh, I'm, 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 I'm with people now, and I will let you know later. As I was eating lunch, that message hit me. And I told my friends, after we finish lunch, you guys, please come with me. We're going to go to those girls and encourage them and motivate them. And they were happy too. We, yes. we dropped. I didn't call her. I didn't tell her that I'm coming. She just showed up. <laughs> yeah, I just showed up. And when she saw me, she stand up and she was, she was really emotional. Oh, my God. And I said, we come to support you. And I, I said, let me put the apron. I'll put the apron. I saw that. Coffee. You got involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah she, she was very happy. And, and, and I'm more than glad to do that. And she's not the last one I did. 
I did more with, with other groups. And I'm going to keep doing that to, to support anyone who's doing a good job. What I, what I believe also is you, can, you cannot push someone who's sitting, but you can push someone who's standing or walking. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's doing a good job, we need to encourage them. So even the others will take advantage and, 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 and imitate them in a good way. Right, right. They will follow suit for sure. Uh, finally, um, you know, so, uh, Somali youth, as we both know, live in a, in a country that has a lot of um, work to do. Um, and they live in, a, in, like you just described, some of them in tough situations. What would you um, tell them uh, to encourage them? If you could sum up a few words for encouragement for the youth that could be possibly listening to you. The youth, I, I will tell them, uh, usually, uh, as I said earlier, they are our leaders. They should go look for, to be MPs, look for higher education, higher uh, position in the government. Uh, I believe that they should aim high. Mm. Aim as much high as they, as they can. And, uh, and, and I will tell our leaders, our politicians, guide the, our youth, let them take over the positions, don't hold on to the positions of the governments, let this youth take over and, 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 and govern us. Right. Uh, um, just to go back to the book, finally, um, are there plans to um, work in the book be found? How can people who live abroad, for example, get the book? I know the book's available all over Somalia. Uh, and is there, are there any plans for you to do them in English uh, for the, uh, you know, diaspora new generations? Yes, yes. Uh, the book now is written in Somali. Uh, now, as we are talking, it's been translated to English. And I believe that next maybe uh, eight weeks or, or seven weeks, uh, the English version will come out. In the meantime, uh, I've launched uh, last week in Mogadishu now. And I will make a tour now, uh, even in Mogadishu, of uh, a meeting with the um, universities and, 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 and students uh, and visit them. Also, I will go to uh, other cities throughout Somalia and then go to Nairobi, Istanbul, Europe, uh, North America uh, to launch there. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm also uh, now, uh, my people are working uh, to put in on Amazon so people can uh, 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 get yeah. from there. Yeah. yeah, I'll put the, uh, the, the descriptions that in the description, the links that are uh, the, with the businesses that are actually offering and, and sending the book for free, if people buy them, uh, the delivery would be free. And I will put the description uh, in the in, in I'll put the link in the description box. Um, I, I would like again to thank you for your time and for your um, you know expertise and sharing all of those uh, good stories that you've encountered over the years. And I um, would love to encourage you to do that more. And hopefully, this won't be the last time we talk about. Uh, your life and other positive things that are going on in Somalia. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate your calling. You are most welcome. Take care. Bye-bye.